And welcome back. Well, many people have the desire to lose weight, but the motivation to do the work, well, that's a little bit harder to come by. Or a lot harder, right? Dr. Ian right. Smith is a celebrity trainer and best-selling author. Today, he has ways to avoid gaining weight. His new book is called Mind Over Weight, Curb Cravings, Find Motivation, and Hit Your Number in Seven Simple Steps. Easy for you to say, Ian. Good morning, Ian. <laughs> No, it's a good morning. No, I'm not saying it's easy, but I'm saying it's doable. How about that? Okay, we'll take that. <laughs> um, but honestly, I think the timing of this book is perfect because I hear so, I mean, there are a few people who are like, oh yeah, I'm in my workout groove. I'm losing weight. I'm not eating sugar. But most people I think are feeling like they're craving sweets and carbs. 100%. You know, I figured let's not put on what I call the quarantine 15. I mean, we have all this time at home uh, to, to work on our bodies and our minds. One thing about cravings I want people to understand is that cravings are chemical. Uh, your body releases something called dopamine, which is a neurotransmitter in your brain. I have a little brain here, for example. So when you see a food that you like, or you eat a food that you like, or you think about it, your body releases a neurotransmitter, the dopamine, in what's called your ventral tegmental area. And when it releases that dopamine, it then spreads to the front of your brain to other areas like the prefrontal cortex. And it tells your body, geez, I love this. I want to get it again. Let's remember how good this felt when I ate that piece of chocolate cake. So what happens for people is when they think about chocolate cake or they see chocolate cake or smell something like it, they end up going to get it because that is the craving. But here's the key. Cravings are transient. They're, tempor they're, they're, they're temporary. They only last about 15 to 20 minutes. So if you can outlast the craving and not give in to it, then you can beat it. And that's why in the book on chapter four, I give you all kinds of strategies on how to crush those cravings because that'll prevent you from eating foods off of your plan. All right, I like that. 15 minutes is what we have to do to outlast that like addict part of our brain. You also say there's different types of motivators. There's extrinsic and intrinsic. Explain. Yeah, yeah, you know, chapter one is all about unlocking your motivation. You know, for years, people have said to me, how do I get motivated? How do I stay motivated? Well, there are two categories of motivators. They're internal or intrinsic external, extrinsic. So internal means that you do something because you enjoy the process. For example, you may watch a TV show because it makes you feel good. A rom-com makes you laugh, makes you feel good. Whereas you may decide that you want to study a subject because you want to do well on a test. That's external because what's, what's driving you is the external reward, doing well on the test versus internal. In order to keep motivation, you have to have a combination of both. So in the book, Mind Over Way, I give you a list of in, a classical intrinsic motivators and extrinsic motivators, and the combination of the two is what can really keep you motivated. Okay, first of all, I'm going to need you to send me that book. Um, <laughs> you second, got it. <laughs> second, I think it's very fascinating that you just have that brain there on your cutting board at your home kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what I want to talk about is goals, because I think a lot of people have trouble setting them and actually losing the weight. What's the right way to set goals? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. Chapter two is all about goal setting. Unfortunately, people set bad goals. By that, I mean they ask too much of their bodies too fast. Oh, I want to lose 20 pounds in 20 days. I mean, that's just too much. Good weight loss is considered to be a pound a week on average. So if you lost a pound a week on average, you're doing really well. More than that, you're doing great. If people set more realistic goals, then they would achieve those smaller milestones, and that would perpetuate into them getting the bigger goals. So chapter uh, two deals all with how do we set the right goals so that you're encouraged and not discouraged because you're not meeting those unrealistic expectations. Oh, that takes so much patience, Ian. <laughs> Listen, you know, I if mean, you didn't put on... You didn't put on 20 pounds in 20 days. It took you probably a few years to put on 20 pounds. Why are you asking your body to take it off so fast? <laughs> I may have done it in about a year, but, you know, hopefully I can take it off in a year, too. I'm not sure. Well, let's talk about stress, though, because I know a lot of people are dealing with stress right now with their finances, with their life, with being alone or, or social distancing, all the things going on. How do, we, how do we stop from stress eating? Because stress can also cause cortisol and all that whole, you know, downhill spiral yeah absolutely well chapter seven and the only chapter seven is a very small book by the way so it's easy to get through but chapter seven deals with your environment and fixing your relationship to food and one of those things is stress we medicate ourselves when we're, we're disappointed we're sad we're angry 
And the book gives you all kinds of kinds of strategies and also gives you some foods to eat when you're stressed. So if you're stressed out, rather than grabbing the chips, let's have some chocolate covered strawberries, some chocolate covered almonds. Let's have some watermelon with feta. So the book gives you this nice list of things to go for when you're stressed if you want food. But if you don't want food, listening to music, walking, uh, getting your mind away from it, talking on the phone to someone. In fact, on my Instagram page, I have a two-week free meal plan people can follow. They should go to my Instagram, at Dr. Ian Smith, spell the doctor out, and you'll see a two-week shelter-in-place plan for people who are stressed at home and may end up eating bad foods. I give you a two-week way to kind of eat well but still satisfy your cravings. How come everything you say makes sense? <laughs> because, because I spent a lot of time trying to make sense. <laughs> um, no, honestly, it, this, this book is so small and so easy to get through. At the end of every chapter, there's a little action plan. So when you're done, you have seven action plans that you just can refer to to say, oh, these are my emotional triggers. These are the things I should do, shouldn't do. It's like a shortcut. It's like cliff notes to how to get your mind in the right place. I love it. Thank, All right. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm going to share the name of the book one more time. It is Mind Over Weight. You can go to DrIansmith.com. It's about curbing cravings, finding motivation, and hitting your number in seven simple steps. That was awesome.